Hey everybody, Russ Miller here, and uh, I just want to give you a quick little tour of uh, my studio. We are in Chatsworth, California, which is in LA, just outside of uh, downtown. We're in the valley, and uh, this is RMI Studios. I've had this um, location for maybe six or seven years, and uh, there's uh, three rooms, and this is in the main drum room right now, and uh, let me just show you around a little bit. So uh, the first thing, is uh, Drummer Heaven over here, which is the studio snare drum rack. And I keep uh, an inventory of snares here that usually doesn't really go anywhere. This stuff stays here for the studio. And there's everything from vintage stuff like the 53 Radio King and 55 Round Badge and old Ludwig Superphonic Classic Black Beauties through modern snares that I have from Yamaha and Mapex. Um, just a lot of different stuff. Um, it's not really relative to one company necessarily. It's more relative to just having an, an inventory of any sound that I would need. So um, as we walk in, you'll see this is the main drum room. And uh, when we built the studio, it was designed by a studio designer. Uh, one of the keys was having a, a, as big a drum room as we could get without taking up a ton of space. Um, the room mics are uh, back 10 feet and up 8 feet because the room is V-shaped. And um, we have an 11-foot ceiling in the room. So we compress the rooms a little bit. It really makes a deceivingly large drum sound. I mean, it, it actually sounds much, much bigger than it actually is. But uh, the drums stay in this position. You see this is the uh, brand new uh, Mapex Saturn IV exotic kit, literally about five days old. It's not, it's not released to the public yet. It will be this week at the 2013 NAMM show. And um, I use all Shure mics, and you'll see the, the kit's outfitted with those. Uh, large condensers for overheads and rooms, the 44, KSM 44. And then the KSM 27s for toms, which are basically the same mic as a 44, smaller housing. And uh, course 57s on the snares, uh, 80, SM81 on the hat. And uh, there's a Beta 52 inside of the kick, which is on a May shock, mi shock mounted uh, mount. And then the, my uh, signature sub kick there from Yamaha on the kick drum. And on the aux kick, there's another 52. So there's actually 14, uh, 15 lines, actually, with the aux kick drum. There's 15 lines of drums that get tracked on everything that comes in and out of here. So when people hire me for remote sessions, which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, they get back 15 mono tracks of drums. And with that, you can pretty much mix anything you'd want to mix out of it. Uh, the room stuff you know for more rock or close mics for uh, more of a tight sound or R&B or studio type sound so you can pretty much do anything you need with that many mics mic lines but that's the, that's the reason we do it so come on in uh, we come down the hall we have the overspill of snare drums <laughs> still I had a couple more that I wanted to keep here so some of the brand new Mapex stuff is here the blade and Velvetone and Retrosonic and some real special drums, and we, I keep a couple extra toms here too. So uh, past our Starbucks machine, a very, very important must here in the, <laughs> in the kitchenette, we enter the control room. So um, the control room, you know, was really key for the design of the studio. Uh, when I was talking to the designer, I wanted to have a really open and big control room that uh, you could have guests sit in and be comfortable because a lot of times with film stuff, I mean, everybody's been here from Steve Perry to, you know, uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt to Michael Dana, Jeff Dana, major film guys. Like, you know, I wanted them to be comfortable when they come in here. So um, I wanted a bigger control room, and that was key to the V-shaped studio. Um, so that we didn't bring the whole drum room all the way out to here to have 10 foot away room mics, we could do it with this V shape. And if we did that, we'd be scrunched into this little control room. So we have a nice big open control room. Um, there's two main rigs here. The first is the uh, primary console, which is all Pro Tools HD. Um, 
And then we have a secondary rig that is uh, here, which is Logic Audio, and that's for uh, composition, arranging, and I do a lot of my loop programming and uh, sound design stuff for movies there. So anyway, yeah, uh, same thing, uh, taller ceilings, everything's been treated. Uh, Oralex um, came in and treated the uh, room with diffusers and all the panels and all the whatnots, and, um, you know, got the sound dialed in. So. Uh, the main console, let me just run through that real quick. Uh, I primarily track everything through original API uh, mic pre's and EQs. And they were all retrofitted into 500 series racks by Brent Averill. And um, so you'll see all of the mic pre's are at the top for the drums, cymbals, all the core. Uh, microphones, you know, kick, snare, hat, toms, all that stuff. And then these are all original API 550As from the 70s. Those are out of um, Amiga Studios console, actually. And Barbara Streisand sang Evergreen through those uh, EQs, so, or that console of EQs. But it's a better story if I actually say those EQs. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, original 550A parametric on all the core instruments, kick, snare, hat, toms, all that. Rooms is 560As, which are graphic EQs. And then I have a few Presonus Eurekas here, which are really pretty decent uh, channel strips for the money. And that's like the bottom snare mic, uh, cowbell, you know, things like that, that I didn't want to spend $2,500 on <laughs> the bottom snare drum mic <laughs> for the other, uh, the other channels. So, um, when I first built the studio, I thought, uh, you know, we're just going to do everything here. We're going to mix stuff and we're going to do all this crazy stuff. And it, it sort of has refined over the years to being just a tracking room. It's really designed to just track drums at a world-class level and percussion, of course. So the core of the studio is right there, which is the 16 channels of API um, mic pre's and EQs with a few personas uh, thrown in for good measure. And the whole rest of the studio was only three channels, actually. <laughs> so I, um, I have a stereo pair of Neve uh, 1272 right here. And that's just a stereo pair of whatever. We mic percussion. Luis Conti would be in here playing. And we would mic up the percussion. Or we'd have stereo guitar or whatever we want. And then the voc we have a vocal chain here, which is a, a Neve 1084 into the LA-2A. And um, that is a pretty heavy-duty vocal chain. Uh, we keep a Neumann M, uh, M149 here for that. And so the whole studio is basically drums, one voice, and a stereo pair. So <laughs> not complicated, but that's what we do here. So uh, the last thing in that rack, just quickly, is there's a stereo pair of um, Empirical Lab Distressors, and those are high-quality compressors that are used on um, the room mics. And really the key is you know, getting the, obviously the best drum sound you can, high quality mics into high quality mic pre's, but this is pro level stuff. You know, there's a big difference between kind of co uh, consumer audio and like a pro level audio. Some of this gear, you can't even really buy it in a, in a store necessarily. You have to go through boutique places to get it, but it really makes a huge difference, especially the mic pre's and EQ's. That really is like separates the men from the boys with the, uh, the sound. It really took it from, you know, a, a real nice home studio to like a world-class recording environment that, you know, where you, not really any bigger difference between going to Capitol Records or coming here necessarily. Um, and that's the way I wanted it. I mean, if you need a much, much bigger room, then great, we'll go to Capitol. But if you go to Capitol, you're going to go through SSL Neve or API into Pro Tools HD, which is exactly what you're doing here but uh, you're doing it for you know, $2,700 a day there, plus cartage and engineer and everything else. So it saves, it saves a lot of money in the budgets. And to be honest with you, you know, several years ago, I saw the industry kind of moving in this direction to the point where like, if I didn't have this room right now, I don't think I'd be on as many projects as I'm still on, um, you know, because I was in commercial studios five days a week years ago, and now it's like maybe two or three times a month. So the room has really proven to be a great investment and, and very, very important. And, you know, I recommend that everybody has a knowledge of, over, 
uh, and about recording and tracking and capturing your, your instrument. It's very important, not only just for recording records and things like that, but also just how it's presented live, that you know how to get the sound of the drums and EQ things and make sure that you know, you're being presented in, in your highest level live as well. But um, I think nowadays with the way the business is going, you need to seriously have a, uh, an understanding of what's going on in an environment like this. It's really, really important. And it doesn't have to be as grand as this, but it, it definitely, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the market that you can get into in a smaller way and, and, and be very effective with it. So I can't recommend it enough. Um, just to check out the rest of it, there's the main rack there and it's got all the interfaces uh, that we use for Pro Tools HD and um, high-end sync modules, uh, the R Rosendahl sync uh, stuff, which is used to um, uh, keep everything in line and sync together. And then also uh, it's for uh, burst signals and SMPTE signals when we're doing movies. And um, we can watch on the monitor up there, um, you know, the playback of the movie or whatever cut we have that we're working on. And uh, there's also an additional vocal booth just outside the door. And uh, everything's connected with video here. We have these small little video cameras. So we can see the vocal booth. They can see us. So the drums can see vocal booth and blah, blah, blah. So sometimes there'll be an uh, acoustic bass out there or something, and we need to be able to visually see each other. So having all the video stuff is real important. And um, yeah, that pretty much uh, wraps up what we have here. I mean, we have basic monitoring. Um, there's four monitor setups in here. <laughs> Sounds like a lot, but I, I have the MSP10 Yamahas, which was the, they're discontinued now, but they're high quality near field system. Of course, the classic NS10, you gotta have those. Um, smiley curve speakers that if you mix on, usually sounds good on everybody's boom box. <laughs> so important to have uh, NS10s. Uh, the midfields are uh, JBL LSR series, and you can't see them behind the screens, but there's um, you know, a 15, a 12, a mid, and a horn in those midfields. And there's two subs under here, one for midfields, one for near fields. And then about three or four years ago, when, we, when I did the Hudson proje Project uh, arrival behind the glass, um, we mixed that in 5.1 and we put a 5.1 system in, in the room and I've been uh, using M Audio gear for a while and they hooked me up with these BX5As which sound really good and so there's a 5.1 system of those and there's two more in the back that are on stands that we put for rears and it's more for reference and assignment because um, uh, the mixing of it we really do with the main speakers and the near fields and then we just kind of assign it and reference it in 5.1 for what it's going to be. And uh, we bought an encoder and everything so we can encode uh, DTS HD, which we did on my uh, arrival live DVD and concert DVD is in 5.1 DTS. So um, it was fun. It's fun doing that. Uh, once, you, once I hear the music like that, though, and then I don't want to hear it in stereo anymore. <laughs> it sounds like I'm, I got a box in front of me, you know, but I wish, I wish that's what was going on in the industry. I wish we had Blu-ray albums all in, you know, surround and all the artwork and everything would be great. But uh, we're going the other direction. We're making MP3s now. So, but anyway, we have the five, we have the five one system in here as well. So four different monitors, control surface. And uh, like I said, Pro Tools HD 10.3, um, the newest one. And uh, that's what we do. That's how we captured around here. One little thing we did is add a little Final Cut uh, editing system in too for video. Yeah, and that's behind us in there. It's kind of messy right now because we have a ton of projects coming in and out for, for NAM. But um, yeah, so it's a full service uh, facility. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.